Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial we'll be tying a parasol post pheasant tail and merger. Stay tuned. Let's take a sneak peek at this parasol post pheasant tail variant. We have a coque de leon tail, some pheasant tail for the body with a little bit of counter rib brass wire, very fine brass wire. Some dubbing up in the thorax that we picked out to give the impression of legs and the rock star is this parasol post. So let's get a clean hook in the vise and start tying this one. Let's start tying this parasol pheasant tail variant. In my Stonfo transformer vise, I have a Honic competition hook. This is their H390BL. It's a size 16 and this is the clink hammer style hook. It's got a great bend to it and it's really intended to imitate emerging insects. I'm going to be using some uni thread. It's ADOT, all of done. And the first thing we're going to do is tie in our parasol post. Now, if you have not yet started making these, start doing so. In fact, I have a video that shows how to create them. I'll place a link to that video down in the description of this one, so be sure to check that out. This is a really neat little thing. It's so simple to make. I'm just going to tie it in with a, a few, maybe three or four loose wraps. Then I'm going to decide exactly how far below the surface I want this hook to be because this parasol post is going to be treated with floating. It's going to be resting on the surface and the fly is going to be suspended underneath it. I typically will go for around two body shanks above. That's where I want this parasol post to be. So this is okay where it is, but I'm just going to pull it in just a little bit more. I'd say that's a lot better for me right about there. So I want to just suspend it underneath the surface. To lock this 3X fluoro in place, I'm just going to wrap back about 75% of the way forward again and when I get close to that post I'm going to pull it back and create a thread dam in front of it really just helping to push it almost perpendicular to the hook. A few figure eights and we have it locked in place. Now we're going to tie this very similar to a variant pheasant tail. For my tailing fibers I'm going to grab some coke de leon. I really want this to be nice and speckled. The color is around a medium pardo. So I'm going to go for around, we'll say four or five fibers. Might be six in there, but that will work. Just like before, I tend to leave it long. I'll gauge it, and then once I decide that it's correct, I'll wrap it in with a little bit more of a firm thread wrapping. It's looking good. Next, I'm going to insert a brass wire for the ribbing. I'm going to be using this wire from Hens because it's very fine and that's what I like on this fly. Here's all the information you need if you're interested in getting some of this stuff. This is going to also, also help to protect the, um, the pheasant tail while also providing a little bit of weight to help get everything below the surface. And then finally let's get to the pheasant tail. I'm going to tie in about three or four pieces by the tips. And then let's get everything locked in place. I'm going to start wrapping down the shank of the hook. And then back forward. Let's get all this all these butt ends out of here. I'm going to put in one half hitch because we're going to be using the rotary feature of this vise. Okay, I have my thread suspended. I'm going to grab my Stonfo um, hackle pliers. I really love these. I'm just going to grab and hold on to the pheasant tail fibers by their base. Now I'm going to start to turn. I have to be very careful because these Honic hooks are extremely sharp. And if you touch that pheasant tail to them, it will easily snap. So I'm just going to do my best to keep them away from the point, run them right up to that parasol post. Once I get there, I can return to my thread. 
see if I can get this tool out of the way. So now let's lock those in place. It looks like they're kind of kinking my post down, so I want to really just make sure I'm wrapping between those and that post. There we go. Again, I really just want to make sure that post is going up there. All right, then next we are going to wrap in this ribbing. I'm going to counter rib this to the pheasant tail really to help protect it. It's going to give us just a nice amount of shine. You'll just see it shining through. And that is all we need. Because it's so fine, we could probably helicopter this away. You can also pull at it sometimes and it will just simply tear right off. And then finally for our thorax. I'm going to be using some SLF spiky dubbing. This is one of my favorite colors. This is a brown olive. I have some already pulled aside. It's just got some really some olive look to it. Some browns mixed in. It has a little bit of flash too. Whenever I create my dubbing noodle, I want to really just make sure it's a very fine noodle. I don't need too much. But then I do want to kind of mention, do not be afraid to build up a thorax because we're going to be actually pulling away some of the fibers to give the impression of insect legs. I'm also going to use these to, again, help to maintain that parasol post. And there we go. Get right by that eye. We'll put in one half hitch. Grab some Sally Hansen. Got a little bit on my thread. Get around a five turn whip finish in there. Okay, once we have everything out of there, I'm going to first grab my scissors and go to this post because whenever I first create these, I leave them just a little excessive. So I'm just going to pinch it and trim away a bunch of that chartreuse. That's where I'm going to start with for this fly, and eventually, whenever I'm fishing, I may even trim it down more. I really don't want that interfering, and because as I mentioned before, I'll be having some floating on it, I'm not too concerned about having a lot of material there suspending this fly. I just really wanna see this chartreuse parasol post just popping out of the surface. And then finally, I'm gonna grab a dubbing brush, a piece of Velcro will work. I'm just gonna brush down along the sides of that thorax. If you need to get a little bit more dubbing, you can also brush a little bit underneath, but I'm just going to irritate that dubbing a little bit to give the impression of insect legs. And there we go. We now have our finished parasol post pheasant tail variant. Let's change the camera angle a bit and talk a little bit more about this pattern. So that was definitely a fun tie. Now there's a couple things I'd like to talk about in regard to this parasol post. First of all, do not hesitate to tie basically whatever emerging pattern you'd like underneath it. We're talking mayflies, caddisflies, even midges. I see a lot of people start to stay up in the 18s, 20s, and 22s, but do not hesitate to jump down into a size 14 or a size 16 with that parasol post on it. Now when we jump over to the fly fishing side, there's a lot of stuff that I, we can really talk about. I could probably spend about an hour talking about this fly, but number one, I like to keep that post really small because I want this fly just under the surface whenever I'm fishing. This is a fly that I turn to whenever I have fish rising and I just can't quite figure out what they're taking. More than likely, it's that really vulnerable emerger stage. And this fly does a great job of imitating that, especially for mayflies. Now, there's a couple of shortcomings to this in that if the fish are taking it four inches down from the surface, you can't really extend this pattern down. So I know some people really prefer to use some type of a small indicator and then just vary the depth of their emerger below it. And that's another great strategy. However, this is a fly that just hasn't failed me. The reason I really like it is I have that, we'll say brightly colored parasol post, maybe in fluorescent chartreuse. Sometimes I'll fish it with just a white post because it looks a lot more natural. But I really love to just see that post, see where it is and kind of know, hey, my fly is about an inch below it. That fish has been rising. I know if I put this spot right on that fish, that fly is going to be directly underneath it. And it really just seems to increase my odds of success. I'm not sure if it's just a mental thing, but all I know is this fly has definitely served me well for, 
I can't tell you how many years. So I hope it serves you well too. Well, if you have any, we'll say revisions or any other ideas about this fly, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments section because this is just one of those patterns that sometimes people are afraid to tie. And again, if you have not yet tied those parasol posts, just check out the description of this video and I have a video link to another video in which I show you how to just create those posts. But be careful because they are addicting. After you make a few, you just decide, I might as well make just a few dozen of these and you'll have them just lying all over the place. So enjoy it. Well, thank you very much for watching this fly tying tutorial, everyone. If you'd like to watch more of these, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook and an Instagram account under that Trout and Feather heading, and it'd be great if you could follow either one of those. Again, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them down below in the comments section, or as always, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thank you again, everybody, and I'll see all of you next time.